another all-wheel drive Miata video. In today's video, we are going to be installing an IAG air oil separator. Now, let me tell you why this thing is important and why it's going to prevent the EJ20 from blowing up. See, Subaru engines, Subaru Boxer engines make a lot of blow by. On a stock engine, this isn't too big of a deal. You get some oil in your intake, you burn a little bit of oil, but it's not too bad. Now, when you build a motor and the piston to wall clearance is a little bit looser and you're making more power, you start making more blow-by. Now, blow-by can cause two main issues. Number one, when you're pushing oil out of the engine into the compression chamber, burning it and then shooting it out the exhaust, you are losing oil in your engine. If you don't pay attention to that oil loss, then you can run your engine low on oil and damage the engine that way. The other issue is that oil in your air, oil in your fuel, oil getting into the compression chamber, essentially lowers the octane of your fuel. It can cause detonation if there's too much of it, and then you can knock and you can blow up your motor that way. So what you wanna do is you want to separate the air from the oil, put the oil back into the block, put the air back into the PCV system, into the, the, the breathing system, the intake, and then you're all good. And that, that is what this does. It takes the air with all the blow by out of the crankcase, out of the valve covers, it separates the oil, drains the oil back into the engine, and then puts the air back into the PCV system into the intake. You might be thinking, that's what a catch can does. And you're right, a catch can separates the air from the oil. But catch cans don't drain oil back into the engine. So that's why this is an air oil separator. Some really heavily built motors on like a hard track day will fill up a big catch can in a couple of laps. So you don't wanna have to pull off the track, drain your catch can, fill up your engine of oil, every couple of laps, that sucks. That's why air oil separators are the bomb. This is meant for a 2006 WRX. Obviously we have a 1993 Miata with not an 06 WRX engine. So there's gonna be a little bit of DIY to this, but essentially we mount it, we hook up all of the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine lines go to this thing and then it's all good. So let's get started. So the intercooler and the charge piping is off to give us access to the PCV system. Got the lovely mess of hoses and wires because it's a Subaru engine. I just wanted to show you guys how much oil is in this intercooler and this intake after, I don't know, a lot of street poles, but really only like 100 miles of street driving. So there's the oil right there, you can tell. This is that main line, there's oil there, oil there oil in there. The location of the blow off valve, which is right here, everything is kind of oily, as you can maybe tell. Probably not. Yeah, we're definitely having a lot of blow by. Yeah. 
But now, a message from this video's sponsor. The Ridge Wallet. The Ridge Wallet is a revolutionary wallet that's light, sleek, strong, and designed to streamline what you carry every day. No more old clunky wallets full of old receipts, gift cards, and a bunch of other stuff you don't need. The Ridge Wallet holds up to 12 cards plus cash. It comes in 30 different styles, including these two here, which is titanium and carbon fiber. Durable materials mean the wallets have a lifetime warranty and a 40-day test trial. If you don't like the wallet in those 45 days, you can return it for a full refund. I've been using a Ridge wallet for the past couple of months and I love it. I always used to get really annoyed with how big and uncomfortable my old wallet was in my pocket. But now, with these things, I don't even notice it's there. If you guys are interested, you can get 10% off with free worldwide shipping and returns by going to ridge.com forward slash gingium and using code gingium. Also, Father's Day is almost upon us. A Ridge wallet would be a great gift for all those dads out there carrying those ginormous old clunky wallets. But anyway, let's get back to the video. Well, progress is good. It's, you know, been mounted and all of the hose, besides one, have been ran. And 
man, if you guys thought this motor looked complicated and cluttered and crappy before, look at it now. There's no way you can really make all these hoses look nice. It looks cool because there's so many hoses, but I mean, look at this engine. If we just look right here, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 down there, like 11 hoses right here. The issue with the power steering system is just the feed line to the pump. I used uh, just a heater core line, and unfortunately that is not adequate for uh, automatic transmission fluid, which is the fluid that you use in this power steering system. The automatic transmission fluid is eating through the hose and it's perspirating on the outside of the hose. It could catch fire, it could explode, lots of bad things. So I have some aluminum, we're gonna make a hard line. And just like that, this bad boy is back together. It doesn't actually look too bad. When you look closely, yeah, it's a mess of hoses. I mean, <laughs> real quick, we have to fill up some coolant, leave the system, because that air oil separator is actually connected to the engine coolant, so it heats up and it doesn't perspirate or, I don't know exactly what the purpose of it is, but it makes it better. I had to take one of the coolant lines off, as you saw, and it kind of got everywhere, so we gotta top her off. Jacking up the rear helps the radiator be the highest point on the cooling system so it bleeds easier. Especially since the very top of the air oil separator is pretty much the highest thing in the engine bay and that's where the coolant is. We need to make sure this is higher. Surprised I had some issues bleeding the coolant. 
Uh, see, the problem is that the coolant only bleeds if the external water pump is on, and the ECU only turns the external water pump on if the temp is over 205. And it goes over 205 for like one second, and then the fan is, fans and the, the water pump are so powerful, it cools it down so quickly, it doesn't have enough time to push the coolant to all the places where it needs to be. Thankfully, I put the ECU in like a test mode, and that's why it's doing this thing where it's switching the pumps and the fans on, shutting them off, switch them on, shutting them off. So this is actually pumping the coolant where it needs to be. So for future reference, I have to warm the car up, then do this. That's, that's the order of operations to bleed this guy. Looks about good though. There's one last thing, actually two things we need to do before we take this for a drive. And then secondly, you guys voted for clear turn signal headlights and not the circles. really feeling that but let me know what you guys think you guys are the ones who wanted this so do you like it or should we tint it just normal black or should we go back to the circles the only way to really test this is to pay attention to oil consumption for the next you know 39 miles but here's the thing only after 39 miles actually 40 miles now it was maybe three quarters of a quart low on oil that's how much oil it had burnt and, and gone through in that little amount of time. <laughs> so this is my first time driving with the headlights, headlight lids as they are, and they, they're just flapping. <laughs> so that's definitely not gonna work. Every time I drive this car, there's, there's one small thing that's embarrassing about it. Last time I drove it, there were no headlight lids. This time, the headlight lids are trying to flap away. Are you, oh my. I hate GoPros. Full battery, and now it's dead. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird to accelerate, wheel spin, and understeer. That's uh, not something I'm used to. chips are in the paint just from that one little pole. That's the problem about spending money making your car look nice. You're afraid to make it not look nice anymore. I did that that longer second gear pull got like almost 70 miles an hour and this happened well you already saw it <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> that's what i meant by the headlights were flapping and, and literally i just I floored it and it was like it was almost like the wastegate <laughs> So ladies and gents, that is it. Although my headlights did try to uh, run away, everything else was very successful. The car felt great. It actually felt 
a little bit smoother in pull with this new air oil separator, which could make sense. It might have been having some breakup issues or spark blowout or misfiring with all the oil in the, uh, the compression chamber. Not really sure. Um, but it did feel smoother. And then everything else we touched also seems to be working still. I will say the power steering fluid does get pretty hot. So it might need a cooler. I don't know how hot is normal for power steering fluid, but like it feels almost as hot as like the coolant when you touch it. Okay, definitely not as hot. I can leave, leave my finger on it, but okay. Yeah, actually, you know, it's not even close. Still warm. Either way, in the next video, we are going to be making a chassis brace to prevent this thing from splitting in half. And that is the final thing we are doing until we take this thing, well, before we take this thing to the dunes. On Saturday, we're going to the dunes. If you do want to check out the next video and support the channel, it really, really helps. Please go over to Patreon and become a patron. Nowadays, Patreon is supporting me significantly more than YouTube is, so it's a huge help. Otherwise, if you did enjoy this video, please give it a like, please give it a dislike. If you didn't though, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Um, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Peace out, goodbye. Also, check this out. You can't really tell from here, but let me show you all the damage that little gravel excursion has caused. All of that. There's that, there's that right there. That up there. And then all the stuff over here. <laughs> so sad. So should I clear bra or should I just get some touch up paint World Rally Blue and just touch up all the little spots every time we take it off-roading? It's so pretty, but it's gonna get destroyed.